rewatched it. It was pretty great. Surprisingly fresh. Yeah. Are we going? We are. Hey! I was just uh, telling Brandon that uh, I started rewatching the Matrix trilogy and I, I still like it. It was pretty fun for me. You know, I haven't seen it in like probably 15 years or so. I didn't really like the Matrix trilogy. What? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I tolerate the first one at best. <laughs> I mean, the pseudo-philosophical arguments in there are pretty bad, but... Yeah. Yeah. It's cool if you didn't like it. It's fine. I thought Joey Pants did a good job. Yeah, Joey Pants did a great job. But hey, everybody, it's Super Ty. I'm joined with Comic Book Brando, and we're going to talk about all the cool books that are coming out tomorrow, March 13th. Uh, there's actually a lot of really cool stuff that's starting up, some like indie titles that we're pretty stoked about happening. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything you guys want to talk about, just mention it in the comment section. We'll answer you as quick as possible in the truest of fashions. But I'm going to start with The Goon. This is uh, Eric Powell's Return to the Goon series. I'm going to be honest, I never read The Goon before, and I read this issue, and I love it. So, I was shocked and amazed to yeah. hear that. So I'm actually going to go back and read everything before this so I can be ready for it. It is phenomenal. Oh yeah, there's one part in here I was just like, okay, I'm in. For no matter what it is, it's great. Uh, cool thing about The Goon is April 10th, we're going to be having Eric Powell come here and uh, do a signing with us. Uh, we're going to have these issues, but there's also a special variant cover that's going to be available for his like US tour. So I really dig it. I'm going to have to probably spend the next three days reading all the rest of The Goon stuff, and then I'll be caught up. Yeah, plow through it. There's uh, so many excellent things. If you're a it fan was awesome. of, I don't even want to say like a fan of horror because there's more to it than just that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you got zombies eating people. You got people eating zombies. I saw a you giant mad scientist. Saw a giant spider eat, uh, drinking at a bar. There's a fish fisherman. Yeah, it's uh, some pretty great stuff. So Frankie's a little psycho. Yeah, I was very impressed so with this. Uh, so yeah, awesome. And his art style is just oh superb, so good. I was really excited for Assassination. That's the new image book from Kyle Starks and Erica Henderson of Squirrel Girl fame. Uh, Kyle Starks also of Rick and Morty, and uh, uh, he did uh, the Big Rock Candy Mountain or Big Rock. Yeah, one of those. It was Rock about, Candy. Rock Mountain. Candy Mountain. Yeah, yeah. And Sex Castle too, right? Sex Castle, super funny writing team, super funny art. Um, so this is like the top 20 assassins are being brought together for some particular reason. Why? What's the deal? Uh, what kind of crazy personalities and, and names are going to pop up? Uh, very funny stuff. Not for all ages. Fairly uh, bloody. <laughs> One dude's name is just great, but we can't say it on this. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It's so good, though. Um, but yeah, you've got like all these, all these like... 1 through 20 killers. How are they ranked? Why are they ranked? Um, awesome stuff. Definitely over the top. Can't wait to read more. My next one is Murder Falcon number 6. I've been espousing the greatness of this book for quite some time. You uh, have. It's just the most like fun heavy metal book you can imagine. Uh, it involves musical instruments that are endowed with you know the heavy and each one has its own monster that's attached to it including murder falcon and uh in this issue a gentleman whose name is helmborn helmdar uh, there's a j in there uh he's the leader of this death metal norwegian band and he's coming in to help and man there's everything in here there's Woolly, Melmoth, uh, Woolly Mammoths, there's uh, tree monsters, there's uh, everything. It's awesome. Uh, if you want something that's just balls to the wall crazy, this is it. <laughs> B to the W. B to the dubs. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man number 17, Hunted Part 1. So we've had some, some previous like uh, prequel stuff going on. Mm -hmm. What we know so far, Craven had... Uh, the high evolutionary clone like 80 sons or something crazy like that all right uh he sent them off on a great hunt to prove themselves one came back because he hunted the other craven oh pretty intense that's pretty cool craven immediately embraced him as his true son uh all the villains with uh animal themed gimmicks are being captured by black ant and taskmaster 
arcade has built something kind of crazy, Horror Craven, uh, Black Hat's been caught, the lizard's son Billy has been caught, and now Spider-Man doesn't even know all this is happening, but he's about to be faced with all of it just crashing down on his head. Hmm. Pretty big storyline from Nick Spencer. I've got art from Umberto Ramos, classic Spidey artist. Big stuff happening here. We've got the previous issues if you want to get caught up, uh, but this is going to be a, a mega story, and I love Craven. Oh, I know, I know your soft spot. Yeah, yeah. So, is it, it is it the original Craven? It's the original Craven. Okay. He came back during Brand New Day. Right. Um, and he's not exactly thrilled to be back. Mm. He had a he had a, a perfectly orchestrated death that he himself, you know, wanted. Okay. Uh, in the classic Craven's Last Hunt storyline. So yeah, uh, we're building up on the things that have happened to a character that should be dead hmm. since the 80s. Nice. Uh, hello, Angelique. Hello. My next one is X-Force number four. So out in Romania, the, all these mutants are like, they were told that this was going to be a safe spot for them. And unfortunately, it didn't wind up that way. And now Ahab, which was one of my favorite 80s villains because he was just ridiculous he's very 80s villain he was very 80s villain but you know i liked him but grew up with that i was like oh yeah yeah so he is doing some experiments on mutants as he usually does but now all hell is breaking loose and everybody's running around this prison facility uh, the x-force is there they're trying to find somebody and i'm not going to tell you who it is but oh man, Ahab's upgraded himself with some Deathlock tech. Oh, goodness. oh, yeah. So it's some really fun fighting stuff in here, and then it leads into the next story arc, which has a really great kind of uh, teaser at the end of it. You're just like, oh, whoa, he's back. Oh man. So I've actually been really digging this a whole lot. Ed Brisson, I'm a huge fan of his work. You know, he did that great Iron Fist series from a little bit ago. Love this guy. So I'm in. It's awesome. And it was, this was the artist who did the first Cosmic Ghost Rider miniseries. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's uh, the artist for this. Nice. So, yeah. I enjoyed this stuff quite a bit. Yeah. Cover number six. The latest, the Jinx World series. Actually, the last part of the first story arc. Mm. So, uh, we've got a comic artist who has been basically brought in by the CIA to be, we'll just call it what it is, a spy. Uh, and things are going pretty good. He gets to go to like all these great conventions he was never invited to before. He's having a lot of success. Uh, and then he finds another comic creator who also is working for someone, but not the same group. Ooh. Yeah. And that comic creator beat him up pretty good. Nice. Uh, but we've got another confrontation between those two. See, he's now supposed to bring him in. Uh, bring him into the, to the fold and uh, in, a, in a nice, peaceful way. And what better way to do that than at an industry dinner? Sweet. Awesome stuff. If you love comics, uh, comics industry stuff, or just sweet spy action, this is an excellent, beautiful read. David Max art is just fantastic. Uh, cool stuff, and I, I assume that there's probably gonna be like a, a pause before the next story arc, but uh, this is a nice, good, complete story that you can now enjoy all of right now. Sweet. This one was pretty wacky. It's Apocalypse and the X-Tracks. As you can see, uh, Apocalypse is not his very, you know, looming doom self in this. He's actually, actually a bit more Austin Powers. Yeah, he's a little more uh, artsy, a little less fartsy. So, <laughs> sorry, that was is that horrible. what it was before? No, I'm sorry, that was just bad. So, <laughs> this was part of the Age of X-Men storyline where, you know, being in love is the most highest form of crime you can commit. I don't know why yet. They still haven't like said why that's a bad thing. But Apocalypse is coming in with, you know, some Eye Boy, Kitty Pride, Dazzler, even his kid Evan Genesis, and he's starting this new kind of hippie cult about you know peace and love, which you know, and they're just trying to get those dastardly X Men, you know, bah. You know, they're more of a nuisance than anything than super villains. So, uh, this was very interesting. I, I was very surprised at some of the casting choices they have in here for certain people showing up. So, hmm. I dug it. I'm going to be reading it till it's over. Wow. Peace and Love Apocalypse. Yeah. Does he go by Apocalypse or does he no, go by his original? No, he goes name? by uh, 
Well, like he was always known as In Sabin Noor, yeah. but now he is Murshid Sabin Noor. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> all right, all right. The magnificent Ms. Marvel, number one. So we've got a brand new creative team, uh, including writer Saladin Ahmed. Yes, he was great. Yes. Yeah. Um, fantastic. I really like this issue, and I think this is a great start for a series. It tells you what you need to know about the character. If you've never read an issue she's been in before, um, kind of like introduces you to the cast. And a perplexing problem that's hit uh, Jersey City, uh, that is, of course, where she operates, uh, that is kind of baffling and intriguing. You know, what's going on? Uh, who's behind these attacks? And why does what happened happen? Hmm. Uh, also, some shocking character developments when some folks learn some things. Awesome book. If you're a fan of this character, pick it up. If you never tried, this is the point to jump on and, and see if you dig it. Cool. Uncanny X-Men Winter's End. This is a one-shot that is mostly focusing on Iceman and his many counterparts throughout time. So if you remember, there was a battle for the Atom a while back where all these future X-Men showed up and you see Iceman in the future. He's like the Ice Master. He's this wizard looking dude. And he comes back in time on Bobby's birthday to be like, hey, you're responsible for why the galaxy is eventually going to end. And so giant ice battles happening. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty silly at certain points, like them making jokes at each other while fighting. I thought that was pretty fun. <clears throat> but it's really just focusing on him and his character development and where he's going to be going in the future X-Men issues. Uh, all of this takes place before the new Uncanny X-Men series that's happening, so if you're wondering, like, wait, why is that happening here? It all takes place before that series. So I, I noticed it in this tiny dialogue box right before, like, right when I finished reading it, so that's why I was confused. But yeah, it's written by uh, Cena Grace, who has been writing the X, uh, Iceman miniseries for the past couple of years, so he knows the character. He knows what's up. Yes. He knows things. Catwoman 9. This is a nice done-in-one story, with uh, uh, which I don't want to spoil the name of because it uh, uh, is incorporated into the story. But it's a... Is it a mouthful? Continue. Come on, that was pretty funny. Mouthful? No. Ah, no. I didn't mean to make you pause. <sighs> no, continue. What's your story about? Uh, what's my story? My story's the man tormented by puns and jokes. Sorry. Uh, Catwoman 9. So she's got a, uh, she's got to get something back that was stolen. And what better way to do that than a sweet heist? Uh, yeah, so Ocean's Eleven style hijinks, uh, a big, a big haul, uh, a nosy detective, lots of fun, and all in one issue. I dig it. <laughs> yes, Chrissy, you were correct. And that was awful. I know. But I still love it. Every day. Yeah, it's great. Every I love day. it. I'm trying to drive everybody insane with my bad jokes. This is a little spin-off of the Batman Who Laughs series. This is the Grim Knight, and this is the origin of him, and trying to figure out why this Punisher-like Batman is roaming around Gotham City right now. And the best way to tell an origin story is to Jim Gordon, who is now tied up, and he is just kind of stuck there. Uh, very cool series, very cool, like just a little one shot. It's uh, written by Scott Snyder and James Tinney in the fourth, but uh, drawn by Eduardo Risso, ah. which he did a really great job. He switch, switches between pen and ink and painting, which I thought was really nice. One of my favorite all time artists. Yeah, I really dug it. It really shows like how angry this Batman is. And uh, it also shows why, you know, the Batman who laughs kept him, kept him in the background during the whole metal thing because he might need him later. I really dug it. James was to see Bryce Wayne come back. That would be cool. The uh, the drowned. David says that cover of Catwoman looks good. I think it does too. Now there's a little bit of a controversy. Some folks think DC printed it upside down. Yeah. Um, but Art Germ says this is the way that he intended it. So uh, I actually kind of like this way better. So even if it was accidental, I, I dig the style of it. That's just, he knows what he's doing. He's a good artist. Yes. It works either way, so just display it however yeah, you want. Yeah, however you want it. 
Chrissy says this is the first time tuning in. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, keep coming back. We do it every Tuesday. Uh, just letting people know about comics. Every Tuesday around 6.30ish. Yeah. 6 or 6.30. More bad puns, too. Yep, every time. Every time. Every time. Wonder Twins. No, you just did Catwoman. No. Oh, I did Grim Knight. Okay, I'm sorry. This is the kind of professionalism you can yeah. expect every week, Chrissy. Age of Conan, the Elite. Uh, so this, if you don't know this character, she is the pirate queen of the Black Coast. Yes. Uh, at a time in her life, she becomes Conan's paramour. Mm -hmm. And uh, they become pirate lovers and doing sweet piratey things. This is all before that. This is her uh, becoming a pirate. So we get to see uh, where she's from. We get to learn a little bit about her father father's uh, pirate lifestyle and why she wants to be a pirate so badly uh, very cool stuff I'm all aboard the new Conan sort of universe going on at Marvel so I was very excited to check this out and she was always like one of my favorite characters in the Conan universe too mm -hmm. like her role in the original Marvel Conan comics from the 70s uh, she was pretty pretty bad nice yeah very cool pirates life for me <laughs> Wonder Twins number two for reals. This series is so silly and fun that I've I'm like in love with it. If you are familiar with any of the Wonder Twins powers and abilities, they actually use them very smartly in here. Like, now, does he still stick with water and she still does? Yeah, animals? but not just like water. He does like ice and steam and water like stuff. water like things. things. Forms and, of water. Yes, forms of water, and uh, they're just trying to learn Earth. Like, they get sent from their home planet to the Justice League, and they're just trying to learn everything about Earth as possible. And that includes going to uh, field trips to prison to see how that works. Uh, but somebody called the Scrambler escapes. It's this guy right here, this mustachioed gentleman. And he can, like, switch his mind with other people, and that's, like, his power. And this whole, like, laughably fun um, supervillain team starts getting, you know, in, in their craw. There's, like, a Druncula. <laughs> who he has this problem of like he only drinks blood from people that are intoxicated with booze that's good uh but he's trying to get sober so he's like trying to avoid certain parts of town for being a vampire <laughs> uh there's ant fetamine uh who stays up all night and works on stuff it's just really silly and fun i like to hold up praying mantis is the main uh, middle guy right there so it's just a fun series it's part of the wonder comics label of dc and it's good for all ages it's real not all ages from like middle school up I like gar's exclamation there yeah what is going on in this book i asked the same thing when i was reading it because <laughs> it's great sounds like it's got your name all over it yeah james can't wait for the conan the sumerian avenger oh yeah savage adventures that's gonna be so cool i'm gonna be honest that's an idea that i would not really want to have anything to do with i will be first in line to get that book I yeah can't wait to check that out and see see what it's going to be yeah ridiculous but awesome hopefully wonder woman 66 so this is the start of a new storyline uh wonder woman and aphrodite are off to find out where the other uh, olympians are since the fall of uh of her home mm -hmm. um they need to find these gods and deities and beings and one of the first things she finds is a clash of titans uh two titans battling it out and they're giants of course she is strong enough but she's not necessarily big enough so she's gonna need some help to find them and put a stop to this this situation who does she know who could be big enough to help her out with this Ooh, find out I have a guess for afterwards. Okay. Superman number nine. So John Kent, he left Earth to go explore the universe with Jor-El, his grandpa. But he was gone for not that long, but he comes back and he's grown by like, you know, just a couple of years. So now he's like a teenager. He's no longer the boy of steel. He is the teenager of steel. It's like some soap opera aging there. Yes, very much so. And we finally, uh, we find out one of his little misadventures over there involves the crime syndicate of America, which is one of my favorite supervillain teams of all time, because they're just mean and horrible and uh, sometimes bumbling, which I thought was pretty fun. Hmm. Anyways, uh, so this is kind of leading up to like what, what has been happening to John this whole time he's been gone. And... Uh, it's not a not a happy story for him. Yeah. 
The Transformers. They say they're more than meets the eye, but are they really? Next on Current Affairs. Uh, this is IDW's new take on the Transformers, the new number one issue. And this is uh, something we haven't seen before. They're on Cybertron. This is before Optimus is Optimus. It's still Orion Pax. Yeah. And he's at least acquaintances with Megatron. We have classic characters, we have new characters, and we're setting up some big things in the storyline. Uh, who are the Ascendicons? Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, find out in this issue, and uh, stay tuned, because I think uh, big things are coming for the Transformers. I heard it was kind of maybe a murder mystery? Also? Uh, maybe not? I don't want to say anything about characters that might be dead. Oh, okay. My bad. But maybe. My bad. My next one is this really crazy book called Little Bird. Uh, it's by the uh, Darcy Van Poogeest. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. And Ian Bertram is doing the art. Ian Bertram did that House of Penance series uh, mm. about the Winchester House. Poogeest? Poogeest? Poelgeest? That's a tough one. Yeah, it is. It's toughy. It's toughy. Darcy, how do you say your name? So this is actually about a kind of post-apocalyptic future where there's this girl called Little Bird, that's her name, and she is just basically trying to survive out in this future, and she is on a quest, but the people that she is trying to hide from is part of this neo-religion of Christianity that uh, has essentially taken over what's left of society. And so it's a, you know, David and Goliath kind of story happening here. Art's pretty amazing in I'm here. Digging that art. Yeah, I really dig this artwork. I'm not going to. I didn't read it all the way through because I really want to devote my time to it. But it looks freaking amazing. And there's a giant man called Axe who is Canadian. Yep. And you'll know what that means when you read it. it certainly is. Justice League Dark number nine. So the law, or sorry, the uh, of order. The Lords of Order. <laughs> the, law. the Lords of Order are back, and they are a big, big problem. Uh, magic is dying, and now you have Dr. Fate and some similar, familiar DC characters that have been uh, basically taken over by the Lords of Order, now causing big, big problems. And it's up to just a small, small team. Uh, to stop them and that team is made a little bit less so because Wonder Woman and Zatanna are off doing something else they're trying to find another route to, to helping this prevent this disaster so now you've got Swamp Thing you've got Detective Chimp uh, you've got Demon and just a handful of others to stop the Lords of Order and that's probably not going to be possible my first trade paperback is this really fun series called Moonstruck. Uh, this is volume two. It, if you're not familiar with this series, it's a kind of mystical fairy tale kind of land. And it's mainly like, they're not even like forefront of the uh, cover. It's about these, this trio right here. One's a baker that's, you know, try, has a new girlfriend, trying to learn the ropes of girlfriendery. And uh, their friend who is always the third wheel, who is also a centaur. And <laughs> in this story, there's a lot of happening in here, but there's, uh, you know, werewolves and, you know, awkward relationship, like snafus. Everybody has that when they first start dating somebody and like, you know, oops, I farted, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> when you're traipsing about the world of girlfriendery. Yes, girlfriendery. Uh, I really dig this series. It's written by Grace Ellis, who is one of the co-creators of Lumberjanes. So if you liked that series, you'll definitely dig this. Uh, the first volume of this series was awesome. I read it, and now I'm going to be able to read this. Yeah. Oblivion Song, Chapter 2. So 10 years ago, 300,000 people just disappeared from... Uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. It's like, was it Pittsburgh? I can't remember. Uh, just gone. And everyone sort of gave up and didn't know what happened and just learned to deal with it. However, one man uh, did not give up and he found a way to bring his brother back. Uh, but now his actions have some consequences mm -hmm. uh, and, and bigger steps are going to be taken and surprising moves are going to be made. This is the newer series by Robert Kirkman, creator of Walking Dead. So if you like his kind of... Uh, uh, storytelling, you know, chapter to chapter and kind of big jaw-dropping moments, you should probably pick this up. Ruben says, hey fellas, hey! Hello Ruben. David says that Transformer comic looks great. 
Yeah, I'm really stoked about it because, like, you know, fresh starts. Need yeah. that sometimes. Gotta, gotta give us something, a good jumping on point to get back into it. Oh, yeah. My next one is Batman versus Deathstroke. So this was a really cool mini, well, not mini series, tie-in series, I guess, between uh, Batman and Deathstroke series. Uh, so there are some questions about the parentage of Damian Wayne. Who could it be? Could it be Deathstroke, maybe? What? What? And so Batman and Deathstroke are now, you know, about to get some uh, pugilism happening here between them to figure out what's happening. You know, they could just take a test. They could. <laughs> and do they? Who knows? Or they could fight for it, I guess? Yeah. So this was a really, really fun series. Very action-packed. Uh, written by Christopher Priest, who I'm a huge fan of. Comics legend. Yeah. And uh, art by Carlo Pagulian from Planet Hulk. Oh. And uh, Ed Bennis from Justice League of America, as well as Jason Paz from Batman and Robin Eternal. So really awesome hardcore or hardcover hardcore co hardcover it is a hardcore hardcover because there's a lot of fun happening in this uh so nah it's gonna be awesome i also can't wait to reread this in a hardcore dad fight yeah just like fourth of july <laughs> <laughs> i'm speaking too much of my past <laughs> wow gonna go to your barbecue and see what's going on Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons. This is the crossover no one expected, but man, is it awesome. If you're a Rick and Morty fan and have been curious about Dungeons and Dragons, let's be honest, if you're a Rick and Morty fan, you probably play Dungeons and Dragons and vice versa. Uh, super hilarious crossover. Poor Morty needs a, a crash course in D&D to uh, try to impress a really cute girl. Uh, so, of course, Grandpa, who's a huge fan mm -hmm. of Dungeons and Dragons, is going to run him and eventually the rest of the family through their uh, uh, their stats and their rolling and uh, and then things get even better when he loses control of the situation. So forgive me if I'm mistaken here, but doesn't each issue coincide with the release of that Dungeons and Dragons? Or Dragons? So the first issue is based off original Dungeons and Dragons, two is ADD. And... So it starts off where, you know, like, like the beginning of the story, they kind of like run through the history of it a little okay. bit too, in a very clever, like, well done way okay so like he's kind of like like i said it's a total crash course for for morty and we get a little bit of history uh we get a little bit of uh actual mecha me uh, mechanics of it and uh it's a great primer if you've never played D, &D before do we get some gygax <laughs> i don't want to spoil everything okay. but uh perhaps my last one of the week is Vampironica Book One. This is part of the Archie Horror series, uh, where they're not really super connected, but it's like their, you know, own series. You know what? This is great. <laughs> I loved this book. Like, I'm a Betty guy all the way, but Vampironica was pretty freaking awesome. Uh, art by Greg Smallwood, who is really awesome. He did the um, Moon Knight series with Jeff Lemire the entire way through. The basic premise is in the title. She becomes a vampire. What happens? How does it happen? Is she stuck that way forever? Uh, who's gonna help her out now that she is a bloodsucker? Awesome. I loved it. Also a giant spider, maybe. Who knows? So, I really dig this book. It was great. See, I was always a Veronica man, so I think that explains a lot about our friendship. Yeah, I'm just a Betty dude. I'm a Betty dude. Hashtag, I'm a Betty dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. War of the Realms prelude. So, if you're excited about the huge story coming from Marvel and Jason Aaron, and we've got Thor, and we've got all the heroes, and we've got Dark Elves, and Calamity, and Chaos, this is the, the book that you should get. Why are we turning the lights off? <clears throat> hey, whoa, turn the lights back on, guys. This is the book to get, to get caught up on what is happening. So you got a lot of issues like introducing Malekith and issues that kind of introduce, uh, that introduce the situation and what's going on. So yes, <laughs> I'm completely thrown off and forgot what I was saying, but Thor fights bad guys. And this will get you primed and ready for War of the Realms, which will be like the massive Marvel story coming up soon. Yeah. Let's talk about things that are coming up. Uh, I mentioned earlier that on April 10th, we are having Eric Powell here for a signing. So awesome. He's a super funny guy. Very excited about this. Uh, and then hopefully I'll have all of my goon knowledge acquired by that point. What do you got going on? Speaking of super funny guys, how awesome was it for you to meet Paul Shear? Paul Shear somewhere? was here! Man. And he was so cool! He was the nicest dude! I was very happy. 
And he signed all of our Cosmic Ghost Rider Destroys the Marvel Universe number ones. There's a great picture of him and the crew, the Sunday crew on our Twitter yeah. and Facebook. So you can check it out as soon as you're done listening to us and get jibber jabber. Yeah. Super cool. Um, we're going to play Dungeons and Dragons over at Outlaw Moon, speaking of. Uh -huh. uh, and that is the World Born of Dragonfire campaign. I play in that one, so you can see me be foolish and uh, mean to the bard, as I usually am. Mm. Uh, Friday, we'll be playing some Magic the Gathering. And if, of course, as always, if you want to learn how to play, I'm happy to teach you too. It uh, doesn't take that long. You get some free magic cards out of it. Just set it up with us in advance and shoot us a message on the Outlaw Moon Games Facebook page and we can make that happen. Cool. Um, I have a lot of shows coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm playing at Hole in the Wall tomorrow Sweet. at noon 40 mm -hmm. if you guys want to come out for that and, you know, watch Laser Toss play then. I'm also playing a show at the Mel Metropolitan Apartment Complex on Saturday at two for like a 30 minute set hmm. and then i'm just coming right back to work i'm taking a long launch that day i guess um and then uh check this out may 17th i'm opening for the toadies that's so cool i'm freaking out a whole lot so you guys should definitely come out and see me uh maybe throw up on stage it'll be great <laughs> and then like the toadies slip on it and oh yeah i can't wait the end of the band yeah i can't wait for like just ruining everything but. Fun fact, the Toadies are one of our favorite bands. Yeah! So I'm uh, really, really excited. Uh, the drummer, Mark Reznicek, comes in every once in a while, and I jokingly ask, hey, can we open for you? Uh -huh. He goes, yeah, sure. I go, oh, great. So that's going to be at Emo's on May 17th. That's super sweet. It is super sweet, and I'm still freaking out. <laughs> we'll play some games <laughs> on Saturday, this Saturday, at Outlaw Moon. Uh, we're bringing all sorts of favorites. I've been playing Western Legends a little bit. Uh, here they want to play time stories so if you want to check out something new or play an old favorite swing on by 7 30 on saturdays cool other than that i'm grading a bunch of comics and uh we're also doing midnight release for just uh, detective comics 1000 is that next week that is on i have pulled it up just because i was Good wasn't 100 sure march 26th at midnight two weeks two weeks from now two weeks from now we'll yeah. be here at 11 yeah past midnight Yep. And then the next morning. Yeah, we might show up a little bit late on that Wednesday morning. Might be. Yeah, just for a little bit. A little coffee in us and see yeah. see how we can do that. Yeah, so that, that's going to be fun. Let me see if there's anything else going on. I like our plans for after here and before then, though. Oh, crap. Uh, March 23rd is Hellboy Day. Hellboy? Tell yeah. me more. So we're going to... So Hellboy, no, I'm kidding. Everybody knows who Hellboy is. We're gonna be having some free goodies like buttons, uh, timeline posters, a right hand of doom bookmarks, uh, I think a free issue of Seed of Destruction, the first story arc, a uh, temporary tattoo sheet, which I will cover myself with, and uh, window cleans. So that's, that's cool. Awesome. All sorts yeah. of good Hellboy goodness. Yeah. Uh, I'm really stoked about the new movie. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, I don't got anything else. That's everything. Cool. Well, you can follow me at Super Denton One. You can follow you at Comic Book Brand. You can follow both of us at Austin Books, and we will see you soon. Yeah. Watch out. Watch out. So, really, not a fan of the Matrix. Don't like it. Right. That's fine. But Joy Pants, respect. <laughs> Joy Pants. <laughs>